Coming up on today's show, I'm going to explain why the Seattle Seahawks won the trade deadline over the San Francisco 49ers. We'll compare the trade the Seahawks made for Leonard Williams to the 49ers trade for Chase Young. Go over all the details and why the Seahawks were winners coming up in just a matter of moments. Before we do, like today's video if you agree with me that the Seahawks won the trade deadline. If you don't agree with me, comment and tell me why. Give the like button a little tickle, and we'll get started with today's show. We begin looking at these trades piece by piece. The Seahawks trade for Leonard Williams was not a cheap one. The Seahawks gave up a 2024 second round pick and a 2025 fifth round pick to get the deal done with New York. Meanwhile, the Niners, for their deal with the Commanders to get Chase Young, they gave up a conditional 2024 third round pick, but that doesn't tell the full story on either one of these trades. That's where I come in. Let's start off with the Seahawks trade for Leonard Williams. So the Giants will end up paying about $10 million of Williams' salary against the cap this season. The Seahawks only have to pay $647,000 of that money that he was due for this year. So the Seahawks did really good in the financial side of things. Now, I know the Seahawks gave up that second-round pick this year, but if you look ahead to 2024 in the draft, the Seahawks still have two third-round picks. So when Seattle picks on day two, they're still going to have two picks that day, even with losing that second-round pick. So they had some picks to work with here. Now, when you look at Winter, Leonard Williams, he has already had multiple big-money paydays throughout his career. So as he enters this next stage at 29 years old, he's not expected to earn a ton of money in this next contract when he becomes a free agent at the end of this year. And the Seahawks fully intend to keep him around long term. And with the money where the Seahawks are at, what they're expected to pay Leonard Williams, they'll still have the flexibility to keep both Geno Smith and Leonard Williams, if they so choose to do so. So Leonard Williams doesn't change the bottom line for the Seahawks, despite what they gave up on that end. Now you compare that to San Francisco, their situation with Chase Young. San Francisco is going to take a cap hit of $561,000 this year. Not a ton of money that they're going to have to pay Chase Young for this year. But this is where it gets a little messy for San Francisco. With the money that they're paying Bosa next year and some of the other guys on that roster, to put it simply, they cannot, as of right now, afford to pay to keep, Jace, to keep Chase Young long-term after 2023. They have a ton of cap space right now, but in 2024, the Niners only have about $2 million in cap. Now, with Chase Young... He is looking for his first big money contract. It's not like Leonard Williams, who's expected to take less money than he's making now. Chase Young is looking for a big pay bump next year. And the Commanders did not do the San Francisco 49ers any favors when they declined Young's fifth-year option, making him a free agent at the end of this coming, upcoming, uh, the end of this season. Big picture, the 49ers got a rental. And the Seahawks got a long-term investment at the trade deadline. That's the big difference. Of the roads crossed here, one invested long-term, one went with the short-term here, and that's the difference between these two deals. Which team's got the brighter future in the decisions they've made in the investments for their franchise going forward? Is it Seattle? Is it San Francisco? Type C for the Seahawks, type SF for the San Francisco 49ers. Let us know what you think. More on Leonard Williams. Leonard Williams, a pro bowler back in 2016 after he was an all-rookie team selection. This will be Leonard Williams' third team that he's played for after spending the majority of his career with the Giants and the New York Jets before that. And one of the consistent things we've seen about Leonard Williams throughout his career is his ability to get to the quarterback. He has had seven seasons in his nine uh, career seasons where he's had uh, 40 QB pressures. Pretty remarkable what he's been able to do 
after getting after the quarterback so much. Maybe he doesn't get all the sacks all the time, but he still does an incredible job of making an impact and making a difference and allowing other guys to step up to the plate and finish some of those plays. The expectation for the Seahawks depth chart is that you'll have Draymond Jones on one side, Leonard Williams on another, and Jaron Reed manning things in the middle. But we've seen the Seahawks get creative playing two, three, and four-man fronts, and Leonard Williams with his ability to play in the inside as well. We'll see Clint Hurt and this defense really have the ability to mix things up and make a difference to really keep opposing offenses on their toes with the flexibility that this team is going to offer defensively. A great chance for the Seahawks to get really creative with this defensive line. I like this option for the Seahawks of what they're about to be able to do with Leonard Williams being the type of player that fits exactly what the Seahawks want to do and what they're looking for on the defense. Do you like the Leonard Williams trade, first and foremost? Bringing him in, what you gave up, but then also the contract terms being friendly on that end. What do you think? Chime in the comment section, why for yes and for no, if you like the Leonard Williams trade or not. Today's show is sponsored by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. If you go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS, you can play along with me as I pick some of the top players from across the National Football League, and we get the chance to make money together. Here's how it works. Every player on any given category is given the choice of more or less. This week, I got Dak to go with less than 253.5 passing yards, Josh Allen to have less than 270.5 passing yards. If both those hit, I'm turning $20 into $60, and you can play along with me and do the same. So head to pricepicks.com slash CLNS. Use the promo code CLNS to play along with me today. That's pricepicks.com slash CLNS for a $100 deposit match. Link is in the comments and the description of today's video. That's pricepicks.com slash CLNS. Now, here's what the Niners went with in this move to bring in Chase Young. He is a pro bowler. He was the defensive rookie of the year a couple years ago and was a guy that has had a lot of hype around him, right? Former number two overall pick out of Ohio State. But the constant theme that we've seen from Chase Young in his career is the injury front. He's missed a total of 24 games in the last four seasons due to injury. When he's been healthy, and that's a big if, when he's been healthy, We've seen him play at a really high level, this year included with five sacks. But his track record tells us that he's one play away from being unavailable once again. The Niners plan to use him on the side opposite of Nick Bosa. And credit where credit's due to the Niners, it's a really good group that they have to offer there with Armstead and Hargrave. Nobody's disputing that the Niners have a very talented group here. But... If you think about this, big picture of what the San Francisco 49ers have done here. The Niners traded a third-round pick for a rental that they cannot afford to keep. That's the truth of the matter here. And you have a guy that has a track record of an inability to stay healthy here. So while the Seahawks made an investment in a guy that's going to be a part of their long-term future, although they gave up a decent amount of draft capital for, they're not going to have to pay a ton of money to. Well, the Niners, best case scenario for them is that he stays around and they pay him a lot of money and then somebody else has got to go. So for me, it's pretty obvious. The Seahawks were the big winners of the trade deadline and that the Niners were the big losers when comparing the two. Both teams got good players but the Seahawks clearly are much better off in the direction that they went with Leonard Williams and the investment they made as opposed to the investment the San Francisco 49ers made with their move with Chase Young here. If you enjoyed today's video, like the video, and we certainly would appreciate it. And don't forget, join us coming up this weekend for our Seahawks-Ravens watch party. Our coverage will begin at 9 a.m. Pacific time live right here on Seahawks Today. We will see you then. Thank you.